Right, so my research for my PhD is emitters for terahertz. But what is terahertz? Well, despite the name, it's not scary and it's not painful. It's actually a type of invisible light. And it's invisible light that falls between the frequencies of infrared, so the light that comes out of your TV remote when you change the channel, and microwaves, the light that you cook food and occasionally explode a potato with. And terahertz sits right there in the middle. So why are we interested in this terahertz light? Well, for a start, most everyday objects such as clothing, paper, plastics and ceramics are transparent to terahertz, which makes it great for applications in security such as airport scanners, luggage scanning, and even to the extent where you can use it for product quality control. Now, terahertz is also fairly low energy, so it's not harmful, unlike other scanning techniques that use x-rays, which can be harmful. Terahertz is also completely absorbed by water. So imagine stepping into a scanner and getting your body scanned with terahertz. You'd be able to look at an image and see if there are any water abnormalities in your skin. And that leads to a possible early detection mechanism for skin cancer. Terahertz also is great for looking at things that look the same under visible light. For instance, flour and cocaine. When you look at them under terahertz light, they look completely different allowing us to distinguish between international drug smugglers and international pastry chefs. <laughs> so, my research, what is it about? Well, most of the basic emitters that you get, these are the devices that produce the terahertz light, are fairly low power. They don't produce much. And once you get the terahertz light out of them, it's quite difficult to control, guide and focus because you can't use the same lenses and optics that you can for visible light. So, for my PhD, I'm working on ways of amplifying this terahertz, increasing its power once it's been emitted, and ways of guiding the terahertz after it's been emitted. Recently, I've also been working on a new type of basic emitter that is very cheap to make, easy to make, and robust, or will last a while, but it produces over five times the amount of power as the previous emitters that we've been using. So, all in all, while it's not scary and it's not painful, terahertz is incredibly useful and I'm working towards making this technology more accessible for the future. Thank you very much.